G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and in this video I want to talk about a mare I worked with at a clinic recently that they said she hates being brushed and this working with this mare she went from turn around trying to bite me when I would go to brush her to just standing there and being relaxed and, and let me brush her and I want to talk about how I went about that but before we go there I want you guys to go and read an article so it's on a website called Equisoma and the uh, under her website Equisoma there is a section called blog and this blog I have to look at the name of it because it's a long name this blog is called connection before concepts a comparison of three pressure release methods and so it's written by a friend of mine named Sarah Schlotty and she is a trauma therapist from Canada I've had her on the podcast she's going to be one of the presenters at our journey on podcast summit in uh, San Antonio in November this year and she comes from an equine assisted therapy background and she said when she first started being around horse trainers she was surprised that the method of releasing pressure was where well, you apply pressure and when you get what you want you release the pressure but not before and she came out from a completely different perspective so from her perspective the way she learned it was number one is you retreat at the first sign of any concern so no matter what you're doing when you ask for something, if they say no, the first side of a no. So it's about, uh, it's about allowing them to say no. If they say no, go, oh, I saw that. And what happens when you retreat when they say no, you are telling them, they, you know, you're telling them, it's the whole attunement thing. It's being seen, being heard, feeling felt, getting gotten. And that's Sarah's saying right there. But it's, you're letting them know, hey, I saw that and I am empathetic enough to, to step away. I saw your concern and I'm going to show you that I'm going to hold space for your concern and not do anything. Okay. And then you go ahead and try it again and you try it again and try it again. Then once it gets better, the second step is what they call a cat H approach. And cat H came from dog training. Um, but what you do with that is you do something and when they feel better about it, you take it away. And then the third one is you just apply the pressure and they, they do what you want. So with this, with this mare here, the lady said that she, um, she said that you can't even brush her on the neck or whatever. Um, and what I did with the, the mare is I, I'm trying to fix, so when you're trying to solve a problem, you're trying to figure out, okay, is it my physicality being close to the horse? Is it my hand they don't like? Is it the brush they don't like? Is it the sensation of brush they don't like? So what I did with this mare was I took my hand and I started to wither. I rubbed her on the wither. I rubbed up further up the neck, further up the neck, further up the neck, further up the neck. That bit was okay. So then I got the brush, but I turned it over. So the, the brushy part was pointing into my hand and the, the smooth back part was touching the horse. And I touched the horse on the withers, you know, further up the neck, further up the neck, further all the way up the neck. And then I got to where I could brush the horse. And so what I'm doing right there, that's, that's just whenever you're trying to solve a problem, you want to try to figure out what's causing the problem. So you want to break it down to as many pieces as possible. I could stand beside her, so it wasn't me standing beside her was the problem. I could touch with my hand, okay, so it's not this action here that's the problem. I could touch with the back of the brush, and eventually I could brush that horse on the neck with the, the brush. But the, the belly was the part to where um, the lady said she's really, really bad. So I asked if she'd been checked for ulcers and, and she's checked, you know, she's been checked for all that stuff. It's not a physical thing. And a lot of times horses that used to have a physical pain will act like they still have the physical pain even though it's not there. So what I did with this mare was I went through these, these three steps I talked about in that article. So the first thing was if I went to brush her belly and she went to swing her head around to bite me, I would step back and say I saw that. And I've talked about this before, people tend to think that if you step back when they swing their head around like that, um, you'll teach them to attack you, but that's only if they approached you and they told you to step, that, step back. If I approach them, it's different. If they come up to me and pin their ears, I'm gonna go, hey, no, that's not cool. There's, I have a boundary, okay? But in this case, I'm approaching her and I'm touching her with a brush, and if she says, I have a boundary, I'm gonna go, okay, I fully understand your boundary. So I messed with that for a while, I then I mess with the, the cat H principle which means I rub her on the belly I mean I brush her on the belly and when her head comes so there's a bit to this but she she swing her head around and tried to bite me now this is where your energy and intention has a lot to do with stuff she'd swing her head around and try to bite me and I just put my hand there and let her engage with my hand and I had that 
welcoming energy like hey how's it going you're communicating with me that's nice oh does do you think this doesn't feel good and just do that and then she would straighten her head up and then i'd start brushing her okay and there was a lot of that went on she would swing her head around a lot and i would just catch her with my hand there engage with the muzzle try to keep my hand so it doesn't get bit but this mare can be nippy and and express that that need i don't get bit but i also the thing is i think there's a bit of a test to it as in they're swinging around can i make you back off or can i make you mad okay because that will tell me a lot about who you are and i really think when horses do that they really they're not testing you as in being testy they're trying to check and see who they're dealing with here and i think you know if you go ah and drop the brush and run away well you're one sort of person if they swing their head around and you punch them in the nose you're another sort of person but if they swing their head around and go to bite me and i can meet that energy and go hey how's it going oh you're not feeling so good about this darling i think that's a huge part of it right there and then the, then the third part is that you just you can brush them and it's no big deal but what i noticed with this mare was when i first saw her when the lady first brought her in i thought she looked like a pretty you know happy-go-lucky sort of a mare, not terribly shut down, not terribly anxious, just kind of a good old soul sort of thing. But when I started listening to her uh, doing this brushing thing, in between, after I would stop brushing, whether I stopped brushing because she pinned her ears and swung her head around at me, or I stopped brushing because her head came around and I waited till she felt better before I stopped brushing. But when she started being heard, when I started telling her I was listening to what she had to say, she started having these big releases, these really big lets down. She'd yawn and yawn and blow out and roll her third eyelid back and, and things like that. So there was a lot of held in tension there that I was getting her to release. And that wasn't my plan. I wasn't trying to get her to release that, but that's what was happening. And the lady said, so tell me, how do I... What is it exactly I've got to do to get a release tension? I said, forget about the releasing of the tension. Just let her know you're listening to her. That in itself will release the tension. So, you know, a lot of times you've, if you've got a horse that wants to bite you when you brush them or whatever, first check and make sure there's nothing physical. But then after that, you could go through these steps right here. And sometimes you have to be, you have to check and make sure there's nothing physical first. And a lot of times horses, after they've had a bit of a physical pain, they will expect it to feel that way. I had a lady message me a while ago and she said, my horse had ulcers. I'd do the girth up and, and she'd, she'd kind of get a bit tight, you know, a bit worried about me or, or express some, you know, concern. And so then I had to check out and turn out she had ulcers. So I've treated her for ulcers, but, and she's supposedly ulcer free now, but when I do the girth up, she springs her head around and pins her ears at me. And I said, do you have an English saddle or a Western saddle? And she said, I have an English saddle. And I said, okay, so, you know, a lot of times English people will undo the girth, take it completely off the saddle. I said, put the saddle on her and then put the girth on from the, the near side, the left side of the horse, and let it hang down. Go around the other side and tighten it from the other side. Tighten it from the side she doesn't normally get tightened from and tighten it from the side that she's never had it tightened from and felt pain at the same time. And tell me, does she pin her ears and do anything there? And so the lady tried that and the mare, the mare had no reaction. So the girth tightening on it doesn't matter if you tighten it from the left or the right, it feels the same. But when she did it from the left, this horse instinctively thought, oh, there's going to be some pain involved in this, so she would pin her ears about it. But when she did it on the right, she didn't. So that's how I would, you know, I would do a bit of an experiment like that to see if there is pain or if it's just the memory of pain. Um, that's how I go about that. So think about that. Read that article. You can apply it to everything. I apply it to... You know, the first time I saddle them, the first time I put anything on them, the first time I, you know, go to use the flag anywhere near them. I use those three steps all the time. And it's, you know, that first step, that step back at the first sign of a no, flies in the face of everything we're traditionally taught about with horses. And I think that's the, that's the missing, that's totally the missing step. That and that cat H approach. Um, because you are, when you're doing that, you're building connection while you're teaching them stuff. And that first step, you're not teaching them anything. You're not changing anything about what they are doing. So there's no training involved in that. That's just relational. Then the middle step where you, you know, do something and then if they show some concern, you wait. Don't, you don't proceed any further, but you wait till they feel less concerned. Then you take it away. That's relation and training. And then the third step is just pure training. So basically there's relationship relationship then training and then 
and then training. So I hope that helps and gives you guys something to think about, especially with horses that pin their ears when you brush them, things like that. Uh, yeah, hope it helps. See you guys next time.